Henrik David Bohr was born on October 7, 1885 in Copenhagen, Denmark to Christian Bohr and Ellen Adler Bohr. His father was a physiology professor and his mother was a daughter of a wealthy Danish Jewish family. Niels was the son, was the second child of his parents. He had an elder sister, Jenny, and a younger brother, Harald. Niels was homeschooled until he was age seven. After then, he began his formal schooling at the Gamala Home Latin School. The school was both an elementary and high school and observed strict discipline. The school expected its students to be disciplined and work hard. Neil's father, who was so passionate about his children's education, would bring home some of his fellow professors from the University of Copenhagen and allow his children to listen to their conversations, which encompassed arts, philosophy, and science. In 1903, age 17, Neil attended the Copenhagen University, where he studied mathematics, chemistry, astronomy, but he majored in physics under the tutelage of Professor Christian Christiansen. While Niels was working towards his degree in 1905, the Royal Danish Academy of Sciences announced to award the best research paper on methods for measuring the surface tension of liquids with a gold medal. Though this prize was meant for experienced scientists, Neil still an undergraduate, decided to participate in the competition. He was ambitious because of his growing strength and passion for physics. He was allowed to use his father's physiology laboratory for his experiments, and several months, Neil worked stylishly and obsessively, especially during the night. His father, worried about his son's growing obsession with the experiments, ordered him to stop and focus on his research. Niels left for his maternal grandparents' estate to continue his experiment. He eventually completed the research and submitted it in late 1906. His research was sufficiently brilliant, an incredible achievement for an undergraduate. Niels then received his BS degree in 1907. In 1909, Niels earned his MSc degree in physics. He also went further to complete his PhD in physics in 1911, both from the University of Copenhagen. His doctoral dissertation was on the electron theory of metals. In 1911, Niels was opportune to be among the few chosen to work in J.J. Thompson's Cavendish Laboratory at the University of Cambridge in England. Niels arrived at the laboratory in October 1911. However, the 26-year-old Neil had a very bad start with Thompson. The first thing Neil said to Thompson was, this is wrong, pointing to a page in a book written by Thompson. Niels also found it very hard to get along at the Cavendish laboratory. Neil conducted some research on cathode rays, but the research did not appeal to Thompson. Towards the end of 1911, Niels met another great physicist, Ernest Rutherford whose lab was located at the University of Manchester. He asked if he could be transferred to Rutherford's lab to work with him. Rutherford agreed, but told him to seek Thompson's approval first. The following year, Niels moved to Manchester to work with Rutherford and conduct his postdoctoral research on the atomic structures. Niels soon became so interested in Rutherford's model of the atom, which claimed that the atom was made of tiny, very dense positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons and most especially in the behavior of electrons which was the subject of his doctorate thesis. Niels and Rutherford eventually became great friends. Niels was not only inspired greatly by Rutherford and his work but both of them together with their wives spent happy vacations together. In the fall of 1912, Niels returned to Denmark with two foremost ideas. First, to better understand the behavior of electrons in the atom, and secondly, to pattern his behavior as a physicist after Rutherford's. Niels married Margaret Norland on August 1, 1912. Margaret was a sister to the mathematician Niels Erik Norland. The couple had six sons, but unfortunately, two of them died and only four survived to adulthood. Only his son, age bore, emulated him and won a Nobel Prize in physics. In 1913, Niels published a paper on atomic structure. The paper formed the foundation for the famous old quantum theory. Between 1914 and 1916, 
Niels was a lecturer of physics at the Victoria University of Manchester, UK. In 1916, Niels was made a professor of theoretical physics at the University of Copenhagen. He held this post for 46 years. In 1920, Niels founded the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the University of Copenhagen and served as the administrator of the institute for the rest of his life. Niels was awarded the 1922 Nobel Prize in Physics for his research works on atomic structures. He came up with more revolutionary theories. For instance, he collaborated with Werner Heisenberg and other scientists on the new quantum mechanics principle, which was in connection with his concept of complementarity. The concept of complementarity stated that physical properties on an atomic level would be viewed differently depending on experimental parameters. This concept explained why light could be considered as either a wave or a particle, but not both at the same time. During World War II and the reign of Adolf Hitler, Niels was able to provide shelter to the German Jewish physicist at his institute in Copenhagen, which caused many of the physicists to travel to the US. However, when Denmark became occupied by Nazi forces, Niels and his family moved from Denmark to Sweden, but Niels and his son, Age, eventually fled to the United States. In the US, he worked on the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, New Mexico, where the first nuclear bomb was built. He collaborated with a group of scientists to handle the research on nuclear fission during the late 1930s. He actively contributed to the liquid droplet theory. Due to Neil's concern about how the nuclear bomb could be very destructive, he called for active communication about using the nuclear weapon between nations and future international arms control. This idea was resisted by both Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill. Neil suffered a stroke and eventually died in 1962 at age 77. He died of sudden heart failure at his home in Carlsberg, Copenhagen, Denmark. Neil's body was cremated and his ashes were buried in the family plot in Assistance Cemetery in the Norobro sections of Copenhagen. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.